In today's video comparison, we're taking a look at the difference between the Yolo Box from Yolo Live, the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro. I also have my hands on the Live Pro L1 from Feel World and the RGB Link M Mini. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. Over the last 12 months, I've been testing and reviewing each of these different switching systems, and I like different aspects of each of them, and I'm gonna talk more in depth about that in this video. Now, I plan on time coding every different section in the description below, so you can skip ahead if you so choose to a particular section of interest to you. I'm gonna try and keep this as concise as possible, and if you have any questions about any of these different switching systems, I'll answer you in the comments section. So to start this video off, we're gonna talk about connectivity. Now I'm gonna talk about what all of these have in common and then talk about the one that separates it from the rest. So each of these can connect to a local network via an ethernet cable. All four of these, that's their only option. Now, when it comes to the Yolo box from Yolo Live, not only does it have an ethernet port here on the top or on the side, depending on which way you wanna look at that, it also has Wi-Fi connectivity hotspot connectivity to your phone, which is fantastic. I've actually used that out in the field and it works fine. And you can also insert a SIM card. Now, depending on your location and SIM card type, it may or may not work depending on your location. I've not used this because I only have the one SIM card in my phone, but being able to generate a hotspot gives us the advantage for a portable use. Up next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the power supplies for each of these five units. So the Feel World, the RGB Link, and both of the A10 Minis can only be powered with the provided AC adapter. So it's a wall jack socket thing. You plug it in and you can power the units that way. They don't have any internal batteries, nor can you power them off a USB-C type cable. So just keep that in mind. The Yellow Box does have its own AC power supply, but also has a built-in battery. So if you're in a pinch, you can still stream to the web using the internal battery. Just know, however, though, if this is completely flat at the time of streaming, you're definitely gonna be needing that USB-C power cable to charge this up a little bit before you use it. If it's completely flat, you do need to allow it just to charge up to about one or 2% and then you'll be good to go. Let's talk a little bit about multi-view because this is something that may be a deal breaker for some people and not others. Now the A10 Mini standard doesn't have a multi-view output whatsoever. So when you get this, you can switch between your sources, no problems at all, but you're only ever gonna see one of them on screen at any one time. Now the A10 Mini Pro, one of the features over the A10 Mini standard is that it does have that multi-view out, which is fantastic. So I've got a dual monitor set up in here and on one screen, I can set it to all four or three of the cameras, however many I've got hooked up at any particular time. And I can see them all on screen if I so choose to use that option. I think that's a really good option. So this does have that. It works really, really well. Now the RGB link and the Live Pro L1 are very similar units. Now they both have not only a multi out, but it also has a built-in LCD screen, which I think is fantastic. You can see all four of the input sources in real time. They're not, it's not a touch screen or anything, but it's a two inch TFT display which allows you to see everything connected to it without the use of an external monitor. One of the best things about the Yolo Box is the fact that the whole thing is a screen, basically. So you're getting full multi-view viewing on this particular unit, and it will also allow you to change it to full screen mode if you prefer just to see one input at a time. Let's now talk about the video inputs because this is an important thing that you need to take into consideration depending on your setup. Now, the Yolo Box from Yolo Live has two HDMI inputs, and it also has a USB 3.0 port over here. Now, one of the best things about this is the fact that you can turn that USB 3 port into a HDMI input source. So you can essentially get three. That's still one less than every other switcher on the table. So if you do require something that has four inputs, you could go for any of these and they'll work no problems at all. Just as a straight up switcher with four HDMI inputs, all of these are created equal. It's the audio that we'll talk a little bit later about, which I think separates many of these units. But in terms of straight up switching, there'd be nothing to stop you from buying a less expensive HDMI switcher and plugging it into this as well. So you can do that. And I've tested plugging different units into each other. And thanks to the HDMI output, you have no problems doing that. But yeah, this does have one less HDMI input so if that's a deal breaker for you and you're not going to be taking it out of your house then i would probably suggest going for a dedicated setup 
Up next, we're going to talk about built-in monitors because this is another thing that might be an absolute deal breaker. If you're on a budget, for example, there's nothing better than the Live Pro L1 or the RGB Link M Mini because you do get those two inch TFT displays on the unit, which means you don't have to add a reference monitor or an external monitor to see exactly what's going on. Sure, if you want to focus peak and make sure everything's right in focus, then you'll probably still want that external monitor either way. But just knowing that you're in focus, for example, and having those options stops you from having to bring an external monitor or something just to hook up to the chain. So the front three, the Yolo box, the Live Pro L1 and the M Mini all have built in displays. So you can see exactly what's going on. The A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro do not have those features. Up next, we're going to talk a little bit about encoding. Now, there's only two of these that are a hardware encoder. If you're going to be streaming live to the internet with the Feel World Live Pro L1, the RGB Link M Mini, or the A10 Mini standard, you're going to need a computer. No big deal. Odds are, if you've got a computer already, it's going to be fine using that USB out through OBS or just directly to the web as they all operate essentially as a webcam connectivity as well. So I really like that. Now, this will also act as a webcam if you so choose to use it like that. This is the A10 Mini Pro, but it also has a dedicated hardware encoder built in. So you can go out over Ethernet directly to the web and not have it hooked up to the computer. Now, if that's important to you, this is a really good option for a home studio. The only other one that can do that exact feature is the Yolo Box from Yolo Live. So this is its own encoder. And being that it's got a full touch screen, it's almost like using something like an iPad or even a great computer. It's just got all the stuff in there to stream to the web. Up next, we're going to talk a little bit about the recording aspect of each of these. Now, again, there's only two of the units that can record directly, the A10 Mini Pro and the Yolo Box. Now, the Yolo Box will record thanks to the SD card that's over here. You can plug in an SD card and it will record internally. Now, I've noticed a huge color change between the A10 Mini, which is this one, and the Yolo Box from Yolo Live. This is far more accurate, in my opinion, color-wise than the Yolo Box. I hear they're working on the new firmware, which should adjust some of those color differences or dis disparities between what you're seeing on your reference monitor and what actually gets recorded or streamed, which is good. So they are making progress there with the color science. But when it comes to the A10 Mini, this, as of right now, is the most accurate if you're planning on recording, but you're sacrificing the USB out. So think about that as well. I mean, you can record, of course, if you're using OBS or something like that, but if you want to just use this for straight up recording, you are going to sacrifice the USB out, which means the connectivity to it may suffer. So keep that in mind. When it comes to the rest of these, none of them offer that functionality. One of the questions I see come up all of the time in the comment sections on my reviews is, can this stream to multiple platforms at the same time? And do I need to pay for that? So this can stream to multiple platforms just because it can do it from the internal wizardry within it. You don't need to buy a subscription service to restream IO or anything like that just to get this to work. So it has everything already built in that you can then stream out to the web. If you plan on using any of these rest of the units and you want to stream to say Facebook and YouTube at the same time, you're going to need a subscription or a specialty service to do that, like Streamlabs or Streamlabs. StreamYard is another one that can also do multiple destinations, but you're going to be paying a fortune for that. But you, are, you do get some enhanced connectivity, obviously, with that. You can overlay comments and the rest of it when it comes to some of those type of paid services. But you're paying for it, right? If you just want something that can stream to, say, Facebook and YouTube at the same time, this is the only one that can do it. Let's talk a little bit about the graphics side of it. So, again, if you want an all-in-one device that you can incorporate your own lower thirds at the touch of a button, this is by far the easiest user experience. Now, when it comes to the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro, you can upload sort of PNG files within the A10 Mini Pro software, but it's kind of a bit clunky and it's not anywhere near as visually appealing as the Yolo Box. So I'm going to give the win to the Yolo Box again. Now, when it comes to the RGB Link Mini Plus, which I've actually got hooked up over here, you can incorporate overlay um, BMP files at 24-bit, which is a transparent image. And you can have your, say, you know, logo burned in on screen if you so choose to do that. But in terms of just straight up lower thirds and titles, you can do everything on the fly with the yellow box. You can't do that with any of these other units or as easily. 
Like I said, you can get some of that functionality out of the A10 Mini Pro and A10 Mini, but it is a lot more clunky. I just never use it if I'm using these units. I tend to just go through OBS and hook it up that way. So yeah, think about that. Even though this A10 Mini Pro has that built-in encoder, to get that kind of functionality, I'm always still going through OBS. So when it comes to the audio connectivity and functionality, the A10 Mini and the A10 Mini Pro are in a league of their own. You can do so much more with both of these units, including mixing audio from HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4, and assigning how much of that audio you want. So these are the best two for someone who might be gaming, where you want your gaming audio from that input to be lower than your speaking voice, for example, or you can have up to four. So being able to tweak that is fantastic and also being to off, being able to off-sync the analog audio to match the sync of the HDMI feed because both of these have mic one and mic two, which also double as line inputs. And these allow you to capture, say, audio from a Rodecaster Pro and then within the companion software, it allows you to offset the sync so it, the audience sees it in time, which I think is fantastic. None of these other ones do that. So if that's important to you, definitely go for the Blackmagic a10 Mini or Pro. Now, the Yellow Box will do exactly the same thing as the RGB Link or the Live Pro L1. You select which input you want, and then that's the one that you get. And for most people, that's fine. That's what I'd be doing in this kind of situation. My audio would be going into, say, that camera into the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack or XLR adapter, for example. And no matter if I switch cameras with the switcher, it's going to keep the audio from just that primary camera. So they all do that, no problems at all. When I first got the Live Pro L1, it didn't allow you to select that. It was always audio follows video, which isn't always ideal, but that's been fixed. So they're all even, these three are all even now when it comes to their audio connectivity. The Blackmagic ATEM products are still far ahead in that regard. I'd like to hope that you know, some of these other switches get the ability to mix, say, HDMI 1 and 2 together and get a balance between them both, and you can output that signal to the web. Up next, we're going to talk about software updating, which was one of the main reasons why I sold my A10 Mini Pro in the early days, and I've got another one now. But the reason was it took ages for the updates for the Blackmagic stuff to get pushed through to fix the bugs that I personally had. So I ended up going back to an A10 Mini for a while and then using a hardware encoder to get that to the web via HDMI, and then it worked fine. So I saved myself some money at the time by selling this and just getting a normal one. Since that update's been fixed months and months later, the A10 Mini Pro is a really solid unit. Now, when it came to the Feel World Live Pro L1, this has had one major upgrade since I've got my hands on it. When I first got it, I had some complaints about the audio not being able to select which input you wanted to use on the first version of this software. That's since been corrected with the L2 software. So it's great to see they've made a major upgrade to this that has fixed the most common problem I had when it came to the audio. Now the RGB Link Mini has just come out or I've just got my hands on it and this hasn't had an update yet, but straight out of the box, this has had the least amount of problems. You just plug it in and it works. So a huge positive there. I do think there's, there is one update coming very soon though. So stay tuned for an update video when that does happen. When it comes to the update procedure for the Yolo box from Yolo Live, it's very simple. You'll see an annotation pop up on screen that asks you if you would like to update the software or not. You can hit yes or no, and then it does its thing. It's really easy. Now, the ATEM ones are also very easy to update as well. When the updates are there, you'll see it in the companion software on your computer, and then you can just hit go, and it does it flawlessly. It's really good. The people seem to have the most problems hooking up the Feel World L1 to their computer to then get that update procedure to work. It took me a little while to work it out, but I might do a dedicated video on how to do that, and I have a feeling that the RGB link, being that they're very similar units, will have a similar update procedure, but just the connectivity of this worked far better out of the box. So yeah, big plus there as well. Let's talk a little bit now about someone who might be on the go versus someone who's got a home studio or setup like this if you're making YouTube videos, for example, or you've got a podcast. So in my experience, the best ones just for a home setup, if you don't have reference monitors and all of that kind of stuff going everywhere, would be the Feel World Live Pro L1 or the RGB Link because of that built-in display. It's an absolute lifesaver. I'm using it over here to make sure all my cameras are still on. So it's very easy like that. Very simple to see exactly what's going on. Now the ATEM Mini is great because it's slightly angled as well and you have no problems 
accessing the buttons or anything on the front because they're pointing towards you. My only criticism as a home studio user when it comes to the Yolo box is I always have to put it on one of those Manfrotto pixie tripods because it's either flat like this, so I'm always looking at it in a, in a weird direction. I prefer to have it up off the table like that and just at an angle that works for me. So if you can invest in a small tripod, this also becomes a great solution for home studio use. But you're at the sacrifice of not having that one extra HDMI port. So depending on your situation for a home studio, I would be more inclined to go for some of these hardware solutions over this just in terms of just straight up plug and play. But if you're doing any portable work, any portable work whatsoever, or if you want to take this even into another room and do some streaming, this is by far the easiest. You don't need a computer either. So in that regard, it's a portable unit. This kills all of the other ones on the table. But as a home studio situation where it might not be getting moved a lot, I'd probably opt towards one of these four. Let's talk a little bit now about ease of use because this will vary depending on which setup suits your needs the best. And I've seen some of these comments come up in the comment section. I was like, this is a really great point to add in. So if we're just talking about straight up ease of use, they're all easy in their own unique way, but the learning curve with OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, to use some of these units, for example, might be more of a learning curve than just plugging in the Yolo box and using that on its own. So that is very, very easy to get going. But there still is a little bit of a learning curve because of the software that's built into it. It won't take you very long, but it, it's very, very easy to get going. Now, when it came to the ATEM Mini and ATEM Mini Pro, there's lots of hardware keys, which is technically, in my opinion, ease of use because you don't have to go menu diving to do certain things like transitions or change, you know, any of the, uh, you know, the recording buttons straight on the front, all that kind of stuff. So they are very easy to use if you've got the ATEM Mini Pro. Now, a lot of people prefer hardware keys and some people don't. So if you're a hardware key kind of person, the A10 Minis in that regard are very, very easy. You don't have to menu dive to get things done. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of the Live Pro and also the RGB link is the fact that if you have to change transitions and you don't have it hooked up to your computer, you have to sort of menu dive. It's really simple menu diving, but you do have to kind of get into the effects tab and then, or the mode tab, I should say, and then change the transitions that way. But it's still very easy, but you get four big buttons on the front. Again, ease of use comes down to what works best in your particular situation. If you already have a reference monitor, I can highly suggest pretty much any of these and you'll be good to go. Plug it into the back and it will make life a lot easier. But just the straight up functionality and just being able to plug in and get going, the yellow box is really good. Coming a close second or third, depending on how you look at it, the ATEMs, they're all pretty even, they're just in their own unique way. So think of it like this. If you've got hardware keys everywhere and you like that kind of experience, then go for something like the Blackmagic. If you're more of a software guy and you just want something very easy to get going, the, the yellow box is very good in that regard. Or if you don't want a lot of hardware keys and you want a very basic switcher that works, either the Live Pro or the M Mini are going to do that job without any issues. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. I hope this has covered some of the frequently asked questions I've seen come up about these particular units. I do have a review coming of the M Mini Plus, so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you're not already subscribed. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the differences between some of these units on follow-up videos and different ways you can set them up in the studio because I really feel like I'm going to start doing more helpful videos when it comes to setting this all up. Thanks again for watching, folks. My name's Shane. Links to all of this stuff will be in the description below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Geeky Nerdy Techie. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.